got attention please and the lights in and it is the being reported within the buildings. Please wait for further announcements. Uh, no, so 19, and then we'll go from 19 to 25, 24, mm. to 64 days. So we're both going to attention, the please. Attention, please. Successful in An season. incident has been reported and then within the building. Feedbacks. Please we, wait for uh, further announcements. We just want to get into the minutia of who's worthy who to get a ticket. So we're giving them to <coughs> food banks, and it'll be for the food banks to decide on who they distribute those tickets to. And we don't know whether there will be uh, a, a larger volume in certain areas than other areas. The food banks between them will all work together. And if one's got loads of tickets left and one's not got any left, they'll be distributed there. So it's to try and get all six districts to get the share of the... Attention, uh, please. The, uh, the fire tickets. alarm test is now complete. And no faults have been reported. Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, can I just ask a, just a slight clarification? I'm not clear if I am my bank. If we go back to this issue of uh, inward investment and the use of the criteria of the work down, probably in simple terms, if somebody comes along uh, with a bid, as you said, a bid is a bid, and it is for the same argument, £150,000. And somebody else comes along with a bid that's £170,000, but it does meet the criteria. How do you decide which one to take? How is it going to work in practice? If you Are you going to accept a higher bid, pay more, or are you going to accept the lower bid and try your best to do and show that some of these issues that haven't been addressed by the people concerned are addressed? In simple terms, what, what's the criteria for waiting? Are you going to pay more for people that don't need the criteria? Or are you going to accept the lowest bid for buying these specifications? <laughs> okay, um, this is a strategic investment fund, so it's likely that we'll get bids for 150,000. These are millions and multiple um, million pound bids. And they will be assessed initially by an investment panel. So it goes, the outbound business case goes to an investment panel, an independent panel. Of, um, of business experts, and they will judge those individual bid, bids. Um, but each individual um, bid will be judged on its individual merits. One of just one of a number of criteria will be around um, those tests that are put down: social impact, social value, inclusive growth, that sort of stuff. That's only one of a number of things. So. If we had a situation hypothetically where two bids came in for five million pounds each, and one had all the things that I want to see, and one didn't, or we had some of them, then what I'm saying to, to you is that we would favour the one that complied with the increase in growth. That's how we judge. I understand that. I have a council lot, and I'm just conscious that I've got two more council Okay, lots. well, I, I mean, that's, I'm just going to say that's extremely helpful. But I think it still needs a dilemma, which in some states I think needs to be a look at all the So, Councillor, are you right? Yeah, that sounds like common sense to me.
jak je ochrana v
um, this will take the committee next time on our approach to that, which is a housing first approach. But I went to South Wall to what used to be uh, popularly called the uh, soup kitchen, um, just off the, the front there, and uh, met some of the homeless people and all that. It, it's happening everywhere. I mean, I, I just think that how can we stand back as a society and allow this to, to, to happen with the at the volume that is currently happening, um, something needs to happen globally because whilst we're doing our best, councils are doing unbelievable, we've got volunteers and food banks and all those people who give up the time for you to do all these things, that's not the solution. The solution is we, we need to look after everyone in our society. Uh, we need a better safety net. Thanks, Steve. We'll take the last two questions, and so first of all, Councillor Whitley and then Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Chair. Um, very quick question, Stephen, sorry for this to hear that. Going back to these high priorities, how do you impact um, at these high priorities going to be measured, um, and how will um, the results of that be, be fed back to the sort of solution you're facing to this It is a quick one, hopefully a quick answer. This, uh, it's a trusted formula, uh, so there are a number of matrices that we can use. It's uh, being measured in um, precedent that we can obviously clearly see um, what the outcomes are. But they, uh, the government also um, uses similar sorts of measurement tools, so we can apply it quite quickly. It's when we measure it, isn't it? Because if we say we're going to measure it after a few months, and we hardly anything, so it's going to take years before we actually start to see the real benefits of this. But the alternative is to do nothing, to, to carry on the status quo, and to have organisations come in here, sucking up contracts, basically hoovering them up, buggering off, and then there's nothing left behind, and there are no apprenticeships, and there are no supply chains that are benefited, etc., etc. And for me, it's a bit of a no brainer. So, just as I said, that the Council of Mayors came in. So, I'm just going to take the last two questions, which, as I said, the Council of Murphy and Council of Mayors. And I'm going to wrap up just because I'm conscious that we've got um, Councillor Phil Davis as well to present. So, Councillor Murphy. Thanks, Chair. Thanks for the report, Steve. Um, I'm just wondering if
Ipswich because of no one has to be a councillor. I know how difficult it is for councils to comply with full accreditation. So we, we have done that. Look, okay, let's face it, if our councils could do it, they'd do it anyway. <laughs> They're all labor control councils, and we'd expect that that's exactly what uh, socialist councils would do, uh, uh, in my opinion. Um, the other one on the strategic investment fund, the single investment fund, it's the same sort of idea. Except, of course, now that we've got a mayoral command authority, we benefit from different pots of money. So when Phil Davis signed that the initial agreement in 2015, or 2015, there were certain things that we got, so we got gain share and we got them. There are so many different pots now that are available, that weren't available then, so things that we didn't know. So transforming cities, we've got 172 million pounds from transforming cities funding. And that is primarily for transport and for projects. We didn't have the bidding for that. I think half of the money went to a small number of male combined authorities. The other half is for everybody in the, in the whole country to bid in for. So the brave decision that those six leaders took all those years ago was paying dividends in as much as we're getting access to the funding. It's how we spend the funding that's the, the main thing. So it's not just the quantity of 500 million pounds, which is great. It's the way that we spend that money and we regurgitate um, the investments so that we all uh, can reinvest the returns on that. So councils are doing right, doing schemes that give them a return, obviously get business rates, blah, blah, blah. But we're looking for a return on ours that we will reinvest into further projects. So it's, it's similar. But it's a slightly different approach, so it's not just about the money. Thanks, Steve. Councillor Burns. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just to comment on that really quick, Steve. Uh, just, you know, you said I arrived shop from the Hall Mall, the new station there, and the bus replacement service, I have to say, was brilliant because it was off for three weeks, and it, you know, just agreed to give congratulations to the service, although it wasn't able to be in it, and it took longer than time. And I can say because uh, all that line, of course, I was about the platform reconfiguration. So <laughs> it is about what we really should be talking about: the success of buying our own rolling stock. It means that our trains will there's the platform. Our trains will come in absolutely level. If anyone's been to see the mock-up of the new trains and how great they are, uh, a little platform comes out, anybody, I, I should be back in, and it's terrible to get off just a step on the front of Mersey Rail, uh, which is only about that big, which is terrible to get off in. If anyone's even got a oh, back, back of a bad leg or something like that, but for people with wheelchairs, they have to currently wait. You know, we were saying about um, that they have the right to an independent life. At the moment, they have to wait until not the guards, but a member of staff on the station comes out and puts a ramp up for them. I mean, you couldn't identify somebody more with a disability if you a big yellow ramp saying, I've got a disability. This is absolutely <coughs> gives them full independence. They'll be able to travel around the network with these trains. And of course, what we need to do is to ensure then that we have the lifts for them to get into so that they, have, uh, they can get to any station at any time. But you're right, um, Mercy Travel did an absolutely brilliant job on ensuring that the disruption was as minimal as it could possibly be. Uh, thank you for running that. I don't know if you have ever received uh, some real updates from the National Mayor and thank you for his attendance. Agenda item 6 is appointment of scrutiny members to the Audits and Governance Committee. Uh, the report seeks to appoint two substitute members to the Audits and Governance Committee. Uh, could I ask uh, Jill Curl, Managing Officer, to take us through the report, please? Thank you, Chair. The report sets out the rationale in paragraph 3 for the request in terms of the substitute members and the configuration of the committee. The recommendation clearly identifies two councillors uh, to be put forward. The agreement to those two houses is sought today. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Have members have any comments? Can I ask if the appointments are set out in the recommendations? Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Burns. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, the 
Yes. Thanks, Chair. And one of the questions it says, I'm not, I'm not from the community, but it's one independent member. And I did get a judge with Charles to say about a speech chapter who sits on the uh, council uh, scrutinies. And um, I asked him, I'll put his name forward. I did speak to him last week and asked him about it. I did hear anything. And he said no. My understanding is the individual has been approached and spoken to and information has been provided to them and he's been asked to speak to me directly to find out if there's any information about the role. So we are actively pursuing that as a possibility and thank you for that. Thanks, Joe. Uh, any more comments or members? I said the appointments are set out in the recommendations to the Auditing Governance Committee are approved, please. Uh, item number seven, uh, portfolio legal updates. So I invite Councillor Flo Davis, uh, portfolio holder for inclusive growth, economic development, digital and innovation, to provide, provide us with an update of key uh, progresses. Okay, um, <clears throat> thanks, Chair, and uh, thank you for the invitation to. Address the scrutiny committee about the uh, portfolio area that I uh, lead. Um, I'm pleased to say that in the um, in the in the Metro Mayor's presentation, actually covered a lot of the areas that I'm responsible for. So I'm going to be quite brief and uh, go through this presentation. I'm happy to obviously answer uh, any questions. It obviously is a um, pretty wide-ranging uh, brief. So what I'm going to do is just give you an overview of the activities that we've been you know, working on over the last uh, few months, um, talk about some of the future actions for the next six to 12, six to 12 months, and uh, obviously happy to bring back further, further updates um, uh, whenever, whenever uh, you know, appropriate. Uh, so what does the uh, very long uh, title inclusive growth economic but digital innovation include uh, well effectively it includes um, many of the areas we've just been discussing so uh, I sort of oversee the, the single investment fund um, work that Steve was talking about um, and also the, the work that we're doing around the local industrial strategy we, we have to develop um, our own industrial strategy as part of the national um, framework that the government launched some time ago, and I'll say a little bit about that in, in, in a second. Um, inclusive growth, as, as Steve said, I think it's essential that when we're looking at schemes and projects within the local city region that we ensure, um, as far as possible, that local uh, local people, local businesses benefit. You know, it's part of the, the social value agenda, um, which I think is really, uh, really important. Um, the, the one front door also comes up, uh, under this portfolio, and again, you talked about that um, um, uh, earlier on uh, in questions to Steve. I know we've got a presentation from Lorna next, next up, so you, so, you, so you can focus on that in a lot more detail. But that comes under this portfolio. Um, the whole area of digital uh, connectivity is, is under this brief. So, um, Steve's aspiration is for the Liverpool city region to be the most digitally connected city region in the, in the country and uh, I'll say a little bit about what, what we're doing under that heading. Um, and then uh, also the, the, the important uh, link between uh, academe, academic excellence and we've got a number of really high quality uh, research and development uh, projects going on with our universities and looking at how that can be, uh, we can work with them and help them to translate that um, research expertise into commercial uh, ideas which can create jobs and, and bring in new investment to the, uh, to the city region. Uh, and it also, the brief, the portfolio also includes the, the uh, six million pound town centres program again if you were, you were discussing when the Giving these updates. So a, a, a fairly wide-ranging uh, brief uh, for the portfolio. Um, so what do we actually 
practically been doing. Well, we've split the portfolio into nine objectives, um, which we've set targets for over the next two years. I'll go through them uh, in a second very briefly. Uh, we've got a, I've got a very, I've got a small team that reports that we meet monthly with myself as a portfolio holder to monitor progress. Um, uh, within this combined authority, that team is led by uh, Mark Mansfield, who's the director of investments um, for the combined authority, and, and the chief executive in my my host authority, uh, Wirral, uh, is, is also part of that part of that team. Um, and basically, the, the work's been divided into you know getting the, the, the kind of strategies and plans into place, but more importantly. Kind of, kind of deliverable projects that um, um, you know we can actually measure at, at, at on the ground and we can evaluate the benefits of. Um, so basically, that's the kind of nuts and bolts of how we how I sort of uh, uh, oversee the portfolio and, and the, the actual kind of officer team um, that, that delivers um, on all of those activities. So. Um, <coughs> I just want to briefly run through those nine objectives that I mentioned that, that basically comprise the, the portfolio. Uh, and I'll go through these quite quickly because we've touched on some of them already in this meeting. So uh, the investment strategy, the strategic investment fund that Steve launched um, about a month ago is, is it could be incredibly important for us. I mean, the gain share money that was uh, part of the Devo deal that um, uh, I signed to go with the other leaders in 2015, um, gives us opportunities to uh, fund um, projects within the city region. This is, this is new money to the, to the command authority. But the way we're trying to structure it is we're trying to, well, we are making sure that, that sits alongside um, other funding streams that come into the combined authority. So it's one big kind of pot that we can, we can access and offer four projects. So it's not just the, the gain share money that we got from the devolution deal, it's all the other um, funding pots that come now into um, the combined authority, including you know, the transport uh, funding that used to come into motor travel. I think it makes sense to coalesce, bring together all of these, uh, these funding streams to make a much bigger uh, part. And Steve, I think, talks about it's a half a billion over the next five years, so that gives us opportunities to do some you know, really ambitious projects, which I think is, um, it, is quite exciting. Um, so that comes, that, that's under this brief, uh, and uh, you know, Steve mentioned some of the projects that, that, that we, we are um, funding from this, and um, yeah, I think that, that's, that's going to be a really important stream of work. The one front door, I mean, for, for, for me, the one, one front door, <laughs> Just wearing my kind of rural leader leader's hat is is just common sense really. I think it it makes sense for us to work collaboratively rather than compete with each other for in with investments. And you know I think we've we've moved a long way over the last few years because I know that you know a a big investment in Sefton or you know. Liverpool or one of the authorities will benefit my, my residents because people travel, don't they, every day to work and to study and to shop across local authority boundaries. So the idea is uh, rather than compete with each other, which we have in the past, um, let's work collectively to first of all win the investment because we're often competing with other city regions in the UK and in, and in Europe and, and I'll find way wider than that. Let's win the investment first of all for the city region and then let's, let's collectively agree where that will, you know, what strategically where that should go and then everybody benefits. So it, for me it's just, just common sense really. Um, so the local industrial strategy is the, the, the other area on that slide. So this is about identifying what the key kind of growth sectors are for the local city region economy uh, over the next five, ten years. And obviously we, we have got some real strengths in the city region um, in areas like um, advanced manufacturing, um, 
Steve mentioned the, the business of economy, uh, maritime, low carbon. The, the local industrial strategy, it, the, the aim is to agree what our strengths are and then to use that as a, as a kind of uh, uh, a lobbying tool essentially from government to say this is the, this is the support, financial support we, we would like to help us um, really uh, develop our growth sectors. Um, I have to say, when I look at the national um, rules and, and regulations around the local the industrial strategy, the national industrial strategy, it's not hugely clear, A, how much new money there will be, and B, how areas like the city regions will access that money. That being said, you know, we need to obviously compete if, for, for this funding if, if, if and when it comes available. And our, plan at the moment. I think we've got slightly longer than spring 2019, Kirsty. now. I think the deadline's been pulled back a bit. Um, so we've got slightly longer to, to develop our, our plan. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we're expecting that the drafting will start during 2019, but nationally uh, we understand the expectation of strategy to be completed around 2020. Okay. Okay. But during the course of next year, we'll have a, a draft industrial strategy in place, and perhaps we can kind of bring that to the Scrutiny committee for further further discussion and debate uh, around these key growth sectors. So um, uh, happy to, to do that at the appropriate time. Okay, so moving uh, moving on. Um, so other other sort of deliverables that we've done recently. I won't go over the uh, the ground around launching the the new um, strategic investment fund. Um, it, it does have a major theme around inclusive growth. You know, I do think it's essential that if we're if we're developing projects, so just I'm thinking about my own my own patch, but if we if we're developing strategic uh, a project in rural waters, for example, for example, for this pot of money, it's absolutely essential that the you know the wards that are, that are adjacent to rural waters, which are some of the most deprived wards in rural and Merseyside, you know, thinking of wards like Seacombe and Birkenhead that people who live in those wards benefit. So in, the inclusive growth elements of this um, uh, funding is, is it's important that we, we deliver on that. Um, so that's a major, that's a major thing. Um, and there is, there is a lot of work now going on, um, Mark and you know, Laura and, and, and that team, uh, about getting the, um, the building blocks in place. One particular uh, element of the, the new SIF uh, funding that I would um, draw the committee's attention to is there is now funding for pre-development work before projects actually um, are, are properly worked up. Because in the past, uh, the experience that we've had is we've had a lot of projects in that frankly weren't, weren't fully developed up, weren't clearly, it wasn't clear how, how it was delivered how we can measure success, what the key performance indicators were, etc. There is scope within this new SIF funding to provide some um, capacity to help local authorities and other bidders to develop projects to, to make sure that they, when they enter the, the investment, Steve talked about the investment board, when they enter the, the actual process, they're sufficiently well developed to be able to you know, stand a good chance of getting through system. So I think that's a, a, a definitely a move forward. Uh, I talk, we've talked about the town centres program. So each of the uh, six local authorities are working on uh, proposals around their, um, their one million pound allocation. Um, you know, my authority is, 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 is doing that. Um, I think we're going to get some really good uh, models and, and projects which um, you know, will be quite innovative. So they will uh, they will be considered in the next few months. Um, I mentioned the inclusive growth agenda and the social value agenda. Um, I actually think we're doing a lot of really, really innovative work. Often, um, Preston Council is held up as being the model of good practice. I think we're, we're doing quite a lot, uh, and maybe even more than Preston. And the suggestion is that we, um, we have some workshops in the the first bit of next year 
where we can, um, and that will be open to members and, and, and others, to basically share um, good practice with the city region about how we're building inclusive growth um, into the work that the CA is, is doing. So we'll, we'll obviously distribute details of, of that. And, and on the same thing, um, the, the, uh, there's a lot of work going on around what is called community wealth building. So how do we make sure that the, the funding that you know, the local authorities, the, the, the health organisations, all the public, public bodies within a locality, as much of that as possible stays within the local area. So supply chains, how do we make sure that local businesses benefit um, so we retain as much of the um, of the, uh, the budgets that, that uh, will collectively we bring into the city region benefits local businesses and, and local residents. So again, there's, there's a, a piece of work around auditing, what we call auditing the public purse, and we want to um, we want to share that information again as part of some some workshops earlier in the new year. And, and maybe explore uh, opportunities uh, to increase the, uh, the uh, benefit to local uh, businesses from the, uh, for the budgets that public, public bodies um, uh, bring in um, to the city region. Um, I mentioned the digital uh, agenda. So the, there's, there's a big piece of work going on. Uh, it's being led by um, John Whaling in the in the local enterprise partnership, but the CA teams are working closely with him around the um, the challenges around uh, sort of uh, high speed broadband connectivity, particularly for our businesses. And we uh, have produced a business plan um, which we we launched in October um, about how we do that. Uh, there is a there is a policy around you know the one big policy we call it. So in other words, when we're thinking of when we're doing a you know a regeneration project, either building a factory or an office block or developing a site, um, put the put the high speed broadband in while you're building the, the factory rather than build the factory or the warehouse or whatever it is, and then have to dig all the roads up a second time. So the one big policy is part of that. And once we've we've got all of, we've we've got various bids in for funding, not least with the uh, DCMS nationally for some of their uh, funding for digital connect connectivity. Uh, the intention is for for the mayor to launch this at the um, the international property conference in MIP in, in March of next year. So a lot of work going on um, around around that area. And obviously, um, uh, again, that's something that we can we can bring back to. Um, you know, uh, when, we're, when we're at the stage where we've got um, a, a clear kind of action plan um, before March of next year. And then um, finally, the, the area I mentioned around innovation and commercialisation initiatives. So we're talking, um, we're talking to a number of uh, com companies in the city region um, and we're working with our universities on on this idea about how we can do better at commercialising uh, the sort of leading edge research that our universities are, are, are doing at the moment. And just again, um, the, the example uh, that I know best is that we are doing a lot of work with, for example, with Unilever in, in Wirral and the University of Liverpool, they've got a partnership and we want to understand um, how we can um, convert that partnership into uh, businesses, other business opportunities. Similar conversations are going on with Jaguar, Jaguar Land Rover and other, and other companies. So that's a, um, a, an ongoing piece of work. And again, uh, we, we'll, we'll have some kind of tangible uh, projects in early in the new year that will bring all that together. So, uh, uh, Chair, I think I'll, at that point I'll conclude. I'll, I'll kind of race through quite quickly the nine areas within the portfolio. Um, we, we do report back regularly to um, the, the CA. And the other thing, the other thing uh, to mention about port, this portfolio is inevitably there are lots of uh, links with other portfolios in the, uh, on the combined authority. So uh, my colleague Ian Mayer, who's um, 
got the portfolio for skills, uh, leave of Sefton, I regularly meet with him because inevitably in the, the things I've been talking about this morning, um, there is a massive crossover with the skills agenda, for example, and ditto with transport and ditto with some of the others. So making the links between portfolios um, is, is really important and we're, we're, we're trying to kind of get better at doing that so we don't just sort of focus on, we don't become kind of silo based. So I think it's quite an exciting agenda. I think we'll have much more uh, practical uh, outcomes and outputs that we can report back on to you next, uh, in the early part of next year. But I hope that's been a useful uh, just run through of the, the kind of areas of work that uh, this portfolio is focusing on. Happy to, to, to take any questions. Well, thank you, Councillor Nevis. It does sound like a very wide ranging portfolio and quite a tough job. Is there any uh, questions from the committee? <coughs> I mean, I think, um, I think they're all really good points. Um, what I would say is we've got, we've got these.